Hello and welcome to a quick video on some oblique collisions or snooker questions as I like to call them or pool questions like uh, just basically spheres colliding together at weird angles. Um, yeah, these um, aren't, you know, I don't think they're straightforward questions. Definitely one of the toughest bits of uh, further mechanics along with the Hooke's Law questions and things like that. Um, but yeah, th that said, I can see why this question is awkward. It's because let's, ju let's just go straight away and start attacking the problem, yeah? The problem is, when I when I started doing this, I drew it out, and I thought, well, I normally have a before and after diagram, but what's different about this one, with just the way they've set it out, is obviously I'm going to draw them colliding like that, because this one's going in that direction before, and this one's going in this direction, before the collision, at the moment before, to you, and you, yeah? And I thought, well, hang on a second, my lines of centres on practically every question I do like this, sorry, I'm just making that you clearer, my line of centers is normally flat or it's vertical, yeah? And so I didn't like this straight away from that fact, but I did keep going with this diagram because there was something I wanted to figure out. I was like, I'm pretty sure there's something relevant about that 1.6, that's no kind of a, um, yeah, that's no coincidence, yeah? Look at this, yeah? That's an R, that's an R, I mean the distance from here to the edge and the distance from here to the edge. So that would make a two R, yeah? And we know that that's 1.6R, and what you end up with basically is a Pythagorean triple. Let's just make this a bit clearer by putting, using some color. Um, okay, so that's 1.6R, that length from there down to there. That's a right angled triangle. Now, if you run through Pythagoras, you're going to find that's 1.2R. And basically, um, you can start using like, uh, you know, sine theta, cos theta, and tan theta here. Uh, you know, it's it's going to work out nicely. But I didn't like the diagram straight away. And so, do you know what I did? Because the lines of centers weren't flat or vertical, I just rotated it a little bit, like round here. And I don't mean rotate by times and by a matrix. I just mean drawing it in a different way. So when I drew it, I drew that first, and I worked out that was 1.2R, and I became quite pleased with myself. But then for the rest of the question, I did I just drew it like this. My before was just going to be completely flat. Yeah, so here's my centers, because that's just more familiar to me, that's what I normally do, and I found the whole question much easier because of that. Now, if you think about it, if you're rotating the whole axis down here, down so it's flat, then you all of a sudden is going to come up like this, yeah, and your um, other one is going to be going down like that, and they're going to be parallel, remember, yeah, because they're parallel here, so they're parallel in this diagram here. Now, I'd like to point out that if this is theta, yeah, then what we can say straight away is that cos theta is going to be opposite divided by hypotenuse, which gives you 1.2r over 2r, and that gives you 1.2 over 2, which is 3 fifths. Likewise, sine theta is 4 fifths, yeah? That's really handy, because on this diagram, it looks more like this, because that theta is the same as that theta. In other words, that's theta, yeah? And this is going to be, well, as this is a right angled triangle like this, that's going to be theta. And this is going to be 90 minus theta, yeah, um, for the reason that two other angles in a, you know, a right angled triangle add up to 90, yeah. So that means we can do something with that, because if that's 90 minus theta, bearing in mind this is 90, I'm going to get that as theta again. That should have been obvious to me, actually, because these two are parallel. <laughs> There we go. Sometimes you go about things the long way and you don't even realize it. So if that's theta, that's theta. Yeah. And so we've got this value for cos theta and sine theta. Now, this question is just like all the other questions like it. It's all about the prep work. Get the prep work done before you start. I've got no marks so far. I know I've got no marks so far, but isn't it nice to have everything worked out so that I'm going to get all of the marks later? Yeah. So I'm just going to write, I think this one was 3M. And this one was 2m, yeah? And I've actually got theta now. And this is just the before diagram. And I always like to have the after diagram as well. And so I'm just going to take a guess at the direction they're going to be heading in after the collision. I think that one will bounce off in that direction. And this one will probably bounce off in this direction. Yeah? Now, let me move that after because it's kind of in the way. Let me just try and make that a bit neater. Yeah, neatness really helps on these questions, in my opinion. 
Okay, so what principles do we use now? Well, it's easy actually. We set up an NLR equation, a CLM equation. We also make sure that perpendicular to the line of centers, the speed uh, of the, the component of the velocity perpendicular to the line of centers doesn't change. Now, as perpendicular to line of centers, you would have had u sine theta here. This is also still going to be u sine theta in that direction. Yeah. Um, likewise, this is going to be, as that's 2u sine theta, this is going to be 2u sine theta. Yeah, sometimes that's useful. And then I'm going to call this direction, going out like that, I'm going to call that v, and I'm going to call this one w. I think that's the way I had it down in my notes. Yeah. Um, and so I've turned that into a u sine theta going up and a v going to the left, and a w going to the right, and a 2u sine theta going down. I hope my diagram makes sense. Okay, so now we're in a really good position, all because we did the prep work earlier. Don't forget, cos theta is 3 fifths, sine theta is 4 fifths. So let's do it. Okay, I'm going to set up my NLR equation first. Doesn't matter if you do NLR or CM. Remember, E was 1 sixth um, in the question. So we've got 1 sixth equals, right, it's rebound over approach checking in my head that that's right yeah I think it is okay these are going in different directions so we add them and then we'll uh, with these they're going in uh, different directions as well and you've got two u cos theta here and a u cos theta there and so we're going to have three u cos theta yeah remember cos theta let's write it down over here cos theta is three fifths was it and sine theta is four fifths yeah cos theta is three fifths sine theta is four fifths so we're going to do three u times six well that's u over two times by three fifths that's going to be three temps equals v plus w and so we get three equals 10 v oh three u over 10 um, and so we get three u equals 10 v plus 10 w I'm happy with that. It looks nice. Yeah. Let's do the CLM bit now. CLM similar to NLR, but different. Yeah. <laughs> you need a direction. I'm going to say the direction is that way for positive. Um, if you want to know why I'm going that way, slightly com un controversially, just because we've got 4MU cos theta heading in that direction, but only 3MU cos theta heading in that direction. And I always like to take the stronger momentum, actually, it, when given the choice in these questions, just to make keep things positive. Um, but it doesn't matter. It shouldn't make any difference. It really shouldn't. Okay, so I'm going to have 4mu cos theta minus 3mu cos theta. That's 4mu in that direction minus 3mu cos theta in that direction. And that should be equal to, remember this is 3m and 2m, yeah, 3mv minus 2mw. And remember, if you get a negative sign for V or W, it just means you were wrong about your guessed direction about where it was heading after. Yeah, you just you were wrong, but it's okay. It's easily, you know, you can just identify the direction. Okay, the M's cancel here. Three MU minus four MU minus sorry four U cos theta minus three U cos theta is just U cos theta, which is just U times by three fifths. So that's going to be three U over five, and this is going to be three B minus two W. And so 3u is going to be 15v minus 10w. Now the temptation here might be to eliminate u. Don't do that. Never eliminate u. You're trying to solve for v and w here. So I'm going to add these two together. Call this one a, call this one b. Add together. You're going to get 6u equals 25v. So v is 6u over 25. I can now find w in terms of u. And if I just plug it into here, that's, um, what is that, 75u over 25, that times that would be 60u over 25, so 10w is 15u over 25, and so w is, as that's 0.6, it's going to be 0.06u, yeah, whereas v is, if we're doing this in decimals, 0.24u. Always check as well, in the exam, check that this actually makes sense, is 0.24u plus 0.06u, 0.3u, yes it is. And does it work in this one as well? Is 0.72u minus 0.12u, 0.6u? Yes, it is. Yeah, so we checked it. It works in both equations. Yeah, cool. Um, or you could just do it on your calculator, I suppose. Okay, once we've got that, remind ourselves what the question is. It wasn't to find 
the speed or velocity of our either thing afterwards. It was to find the magnitude of the impulse received by B in the collision. Yeah. Now, all you've got to remember here is this is not like, um, it's very easy to get this equation muddled up with the energy equation. The energy equation, you genuinely need to find the speeds and consider the velocities in both directions. But with the impulse equation, impulse only acts parallel to the line of center. And the reason that is, is impulse is changing momentum. But perpendicular line of center, the momentum isn't changing. It's staying exactly the same. And so that's why you can ignore that. So all we need to do to work out the impulse on B is do the mass, which is 2m, multiplied by... Now, this is just going to be the differences in the, um, in the uh, initial velocity parallel to the center and the final. Now, what was the initial parallel to the line of center on B? It was 2u cos theta... But be slightly careful here. With W, we're going to have to actually, we're not going to take away 0.06u. Well, if you like, we're taking away minus 0.06u. And that's just because this is going in the opposite direction to that one, isn't it? Yeah. And so if we're finding the change in momentum, well, the momentum was going this way. Momentum's going that way. That's what a situation where we're going to actually add them. I hope that makes sense. So I'm going to have 0. Point, what is that? That was 0. 0.6. So that's going to be 1.2u plus 0. 0.06u. That's 1.26u times by 2. We're going to have 2.52 mu. And the question's finished. Um, I hope that makes sense, Ksenia. It's a good question. Send me. Um, I hope that this, yeah, they, they, they're fiddly at the end. It's really easy to blunder in the last bit. I think it's really easy to assume that you need to consider the other components of the velocity but they don't they don't affect the impulse um, and it's just it's realizing at first that it'd be sensible to rotate that and draw it in a slightly different way and also recognizing where the uh, you know question is actually giving you cos theta and sine theta but yeah hope it was useful carry on the good work best of luck in the exam tomorrow I go hope it goes really 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 well and uh, all the best I think the exams tomorrow you'll know better than me but uh, um, I think your email said it actually but yeah best of luck anyway hope it goes really well bye bye